Hi folks, thanks for joining me again today. For those new to my channel, my name's Andy Tosh and I'm a photographer with over 40 years experience. And today I'm going to go over something that can be really frustrating for those prospective wildlife photographers out there when they're first starting out. And that's actually being able to find wildlife. So I'm going to go over a few of the tips, techniques, and some of the equipment that I use to help me find and locate the wildlife that I want to photograph. Thanks for watching. Let's see what this is all about. All right, so this video, it's going to be done over a number of days, number of different locations, and that'll help me demonstrate a few of these tips and techniques that will help you get more wildlife photos. Let's go, let's get started on the first one now. All right, so I'm starting on a piece of equipment that I find is absolutely essential in helping me capture more wildlife photos. I class this as the most important piece of equipment I carry with me aside from my camera and tripod and that is a pair of binoculars. Now, everyone knows what binoculars do, but they really are a crucial piece of a wildlife photographer's kit. Now, they allow you to scan large areas and they also allow you to scan them from a distance, obviously, but the ability to do that allows you the ability to start sneaking up and getting in on the wildlife before they see you and scatter. So they really are an essential piece of equipment and I highly recommend if you're not using them, get a pair. Usually most households have one laying around the house somewhere. Doesn't matter on the quality or that, just something to get you in the ballpark and get you started obviously if you've got a better quality pair it's going to help a lot because it's going to allow you to see better into the darker areas and also have a higher definition and being able to pick out things that may be camouflaged so that is an essential piece of kit carry those wildlife binoculars with you and I guarantee you'll get more photos Remember, binoculars are your friend when it comes to finding more wildlife. All right, so you've got your binoculars, you're ready to go, ready to start looking for some wildlife. Now, one recommendation I make is give yourself a bit of distance between you and the area that you want to start looking for wildlife in. Now, giving yourself distance is going to allow you to scan the area nice and smoothly and you can cover a much bigger area let the binoculars do the work for you so you can do nice big long even movements like this that allow you to cover a big area if you're right on top of the trees or the area that you're hoping to find wildlife in you're going to be needing to do really short jerky motions like, like this if you're right on top of it. And it's gonna get uncomfortable if you're doing it for quite a while because your neck's doing all the work. And also being that close, you're going to start startling animals. So give yourself that bit of distance when you're scanning a site. Roughly around about this sort of distance I find good and I can scan probably hundreds of metres of area without needing to move, just nice, easy movements and motions with the binoculars. Let them do the work and you'll get more wildlife. On to the next tip. All right, so I've gone over how I like to give myself a good bit of distance so that I can scan the maximum area possible without having to move or startle wildlife. In addition to this, I would love, in ideal circumstances, to have the sun at my back illuminating that area that I'm hoping to scan for wildlife. Now, if the sun is behind that area I'm scanning, 
I find that I'm getting silhouettes and shadows and it's going to be a lot harder to pick that wildlife out. But ideally have that sun at your back and it's illuminating that area and you're giving yourself every chance of finding that elusive wildlife. On to the next tip. Now, while we're on the subject of equipment, I've got another piece of equipment here to show you that will help you get more wildlife photos and be able to find wildlife. Now, in terms of finding wildlife, I break it down into two ways. There's what I call dynamic, where you're moving around looking for the wildlife, or there's static, where you sit there waiting for the wildlife to come to you. Generally, that'll be around a lagoon, a pond, by the ocean, somewhere where the animals frequent, and it's a case of you waiting for them to come and for you then to be able to get the shot. Now, when you're doing this, you don't want to be standing there. Obviously, the animals aren't going to come in. So I use a photography blind. Now, this is an Ameristep doghouse blind. It's used for hunting, shooting, photography, archery, things like that. And I'll show you how easy this is to set up. And it gives you a bit of shelter from the sun, nice cool spot, and lots of cover to hide while you wait for those animals to come to you. This blind that I use for photography, it is an Ameristep doghouse blind, comes with its own sort of harness system here, can mount really easily on the back and it's nice and easy to carry and you've still got your hands free for your camera gear. Now I'll show you now how quick and easy this is to set up. Let's have a look. All right, so this is just going to take a matter of minutes. And there we have it. I said a matter of minutes, it's probably taken not even one minute to get that to this point here. Now, on these, you can undo these windows here. There's an inner liner in it with fly screen, so you can get protection from mosquitoes and things like that. But that's where your lens comes through. And what else I do, is I have a little bit of camouflage netting draped over my lens on the outside so that it doesn't, like the shine and reflections, don't scare any, any animals away. But you can see how quick and easy this is to put up. It's all spring loaded. Peg it down on each corner and there is a middle brace that holds this middle section up as well, but it's really easy and like I said, if you're going to do a static style of waiting for wildlife to come to you, these are fantastic. Now these hides, the Ameristep doghouse, has a really nice big entrance on it as well. And that's how, that's how easy it is to unzip and get access to it. They have no floor in them. So what I do is I put a canvas ground sheet inside it so that I'm not sinking into mud or softer surfaces. But you can see there, plenty of room in there. Good protection from the sun. So as quickly as these are assembled, they're also really quick to disassemble. I'll show you now how quick and easy this folds down and goes back into the backpack. So once you have it down into that circular shape, this is the top because of the triangle there. Both hands here, fold it over, and pinch these bottom sections in. 
So you've got it pinched here, that's folded over, and then all you're doing is pulling this section back down. And there you have it. That's how easy it is to pack away. Pop it straight back in. Do its backpack here and you're ready to move to another location. So there's another piece of equipment. If you're looking to do a bit of static wildlife searching where you're actually just staying put in the one place waiting for the wildlife to come to you. Well, on to the next piece of equipment that is going to help you find wildlife. It's a trail camera, also known as a wildlife camera. Now these are cameras that are motion activated. They use passive infrared sensors to detect body heat and movement. They have a camera that is built in so that when this camera detects movement, the camera turns on and starts filming. Why is this good for you? These are fantastic for knowing if wildlife even exists in an area. Remember, these are working 24 hours, seven days a week, looking in particular areas to see if wildlife is there. If it is, it will record them. So I'll put up a little bit of footage here just that I've captured of some animals using these. And the beauty of it is they timestamp the video. So you know what time the animal is there and you can adjust your photography accordingly so that you might be able to set up a photography blind or be waiting there with your camouflage gear ready to capture this animal that comes through at a particular time of the day or evening. So these trail cameras are your friend. Now as with anything you don't need to go to the big brands to make this work for you. This one here, it's a spy point camera, pretty good. I've got one mounted about 100 metres away from here. That's a third of the price of this, and it is just as good as this one. It's a Cam Park uh, T100, I think it is, that I've got mounted elsewhere, and just got it through eBay. It is fantastic. Good video, works if the animals are there, it'll get them. And like I said, these are real handy to help you find if there's even animals in an area. The final two pieces of equipment I'm going over that will help you find wildlife are camouflage gear. This here is basically a camouflage poncho. It's so light, you can put it in your pack it's easy to put on and it's gonna give you a bit of stealth especially if you're sitting around in a static situation waiting for wildlife to come to you it gives you that bit of concealment what have I got in my hand this is called scrim netting it's available from military and army surplus houses and shops things like that what I use this for is to drape over my lens and camera when I'm wearing a camouflage suit. This is called a ghillie poncho. Like I said, it's really easy to put on and it gives you plenty of movement. You can also get the camouflage suits where are the pants and jacket and hood. But I find this is so much easier to put on, gives me a bit more movement very lightweight and it will help you get more wildlife photos. Scrim netting and a ghillie camouflage poncho. Okay folks so we're back again now we're gonna go over a few different types of locations where you're more likely to find wildlife than others and it will help speed up the process of finding wildlife and make it a bit easier for you so let's go over a few of these. The first one I'd like to suggest is to go to ponds. Now, animals need water, and ponds seem to be a really great point 
for these animals to congregate. You'll see birds sitting on branches that over sort of hang the pond. Different animals will venture in, so that's a good starting point, is to find a local pond, static water that's nice and still, and you will find animals there because they are going to travel in and they're just gonna be looking for food and water and seeing what's going on at that pond. So that's a really good point to start locally. Now, next cab off the rank is a stream or flowing water. Animals I've found are a little bit more tentative with flowing water because I think it's a bit of a fear of getting washed away. But if they're desperate, they will go to flowing water. So keep that in mind. It's not one of my preferred options, streams and flowing rivers, but there may be animals there, but it's not as common as ponds and lagoons and static water, which brings me on to lagoons. Now, the local lagoon is one of my favorite spots for finding wildlife. It is just abundant there. Now this is because it's salt water. The salt water in there comes, the lagoon is fed from the ocean. So the salt water does have small fish and fingerlings in there, which again attracts cormorants, birds, and things like that. So if you've got a lagoon that you can access, a great place to go and find wildlife, especially if it's salt water. Now, Next place I'd like to suggest is wetlands or swamps. These are an absolute wildlife utopia for the photographer. There's birds, I've seen a lot of foxes, lizards, snakes. Yeah, there is a negative to all this good wildlife there as well. But wetlands and swamps are just an ideal location for finding wildlife. So if you've got a wetland or swamp, get down there and check it out because you're gonna find something there worthwhile in the way of wildlife. Now a real simple one is tree anomalies. Now by that I mean, have a look in trees, like we've all got trees in our yards and out and about. Trees, by anomalies I mean things that look irregular in the trees like you're gonna have lumps or bumps and things like that on branches or near the trunk, well, there's a pretty fair chance that could be some form of wildlife. Use your binoculars, get out there, have a look and see what you make of that. But usually, especially in my area here, if there's odd looking shapes in trees, it's usually a koala or a bird. So give that a bit of thought. Don't be shy, get out there and have a look at those anomalies in trees. You never know what you're going to find there as well. Probably one of the more obvious locations is the ocean or seaside. Lots of animals moving through here, especially birds. So you can head down there. You're pretty much guaranteed of finding some seagulls or cormorants or terns, things like that. Lots of bird life by the sea, so lots of potential for photos. Ocean and sea, really high on my priorities for shooting photos, especially early morning and late afternoon, evening, when these birds are all on the move, looking for food and getting their day started and their day ended. So. That's a real high priority for me when I'm looking for wildlife. Okay, this one's not as common, reefs. Now, some areas have onshore reefs. Now, these can be like rocky outcrops that aren't too far off the shore. And if you've got a lens long enough or you're prepared to do a bit of cropping in your post-production, then you can access the wildlife that's sitting out on those reefs. Here locally, there's one that has a lot of terns traveling through it, cormorants, things like that. They're sitting there because it gives them easy access to the ocean and easy access to fish. So keep in mind, if you've got an offshore reef or rocky outcrops, things like that, nearby or when you're at the seaside, give them a look. They're going to give you something back in the way of wildlife. 
All right, now this one, I call them crossing points. Now by this, I mean areas that the animals use to cross water. Now it might be a stream, it might be a creek, a river, whatever it may be, I call these crossing points. And usually they are a fallen tree or a log that has gone straight across this creek or stream and it acts as a bridge for the animals to travel across. Animals don't like swimming if there's an easier way to get across a barrier or an obstacle. So have a look for those fallen trees and logs because they're going to be a source of finding wildlife. Now, all right, so the final suggestion for a location to look for wildlife is the sky above. Now, it's probably obvious stating that there's going to be birds there, birds in flight and things like that. But give yourself a chance, have a bit of a breather for a minute and scan the sky while you're out and about with the binoculars and you never know what you're going to find. Just remember, that's where you're going to find your birds in flight. So don't discount the sky. It's real easy to access if the area that you're in hasn't got anything happening at ground level. Have a look above. You just might get that one in a million photo. All right, here's a couple of fairly easy tips that again are going to help you get that wildlife shot. Now, have a listen what's happening around you. If you're hearing aggressive bird noises and aggressive activity from birds, you can be pretty sure there's a reason for it. Now, I've heard some really aggressive noisy minor birds and that has always been when there's been a bird of prey around particularly crested hawks that frequent this area if I'm hearing noisy minor birds with a ton of screeching and things like that you know there's a reason for it and it's time to get that camera out because there's probably a bird of prey around that you're going to be able to photograph now another quick tip have a look for signs of animal activity when you're out and about. Now, this could be things like animal droppings, different tracks and trails that have been trampled by animals through the bush as they use to access different areas. So you'll find grasslands and bushes that just look out of the ordinary that they've been flattened and you might see a little bit of a trail going in there well there's a pretty fair chance that the wildlife are starting to use that to access different areas so that might be a place that you want to stake out now animal tracks in mud and sand are always a surefire indicator that there are and is activity happening there now I've been down on beaches that have basically no human activity there and yet I've seen dog paw prints there. Now if there's no humans it's pretty unlikely that those are dogs unless they're feral dogs. I'd be starting to think that the foxes are heading down to the water's edge of the ocean or possibly dingoes. So keep that in mind that animal tracks, tramplings and things like that are all going to give you an idea of there's and if there's wildlife activity in this particular area that you're searching. Now moving on to a bit of technology that we can all put on our mobile phones or device that we're carrying around to help us find wildlife. The first app that I like is called eBird and it's brought out by the Cornell University of Ornithology and they're based somewhere in America I think it's New York and they have some really good free apps now with eBird bird watchers go out in a particular area which is mapped and that map will come up in eBird and when they see birds they will flag that in the app and then others can see where this bird activity is occurring. For you as a photographer, that is great because you can look at that app and you can see on the mapping, hey, hang on, 
Someone's seen a kookaburra here. Or, hang on, someone's seen an eagle here. So you know that you're in the ballpark then for being able to get some photos of those particular birds or animals if you know that they've already been recorded there. So that's a good app, eBird. Now, another app that I've found wildlife through, although it's not a wildlife app, is called All Trails. All Trails is a hiking app, and what it does, it shows you hiking trails in your general area. Again, they're overlaid on a map, and the beauty of this is it will show you different parks, reserves, and things like that that will have wildlife in them. So they may not necessarily show up on the major players like Google Maps, but I've found all trails can show you reserves and refuges and things like that for animals that may not flag elsewhere. If nothing else, you're gonna find a few good walking trails and hiking trails that'll get you into that bushland and area where you may find wildlife anyway. So that's called all trails. Now the next cab off the rank is Google Maps. They're going to show you things like reserves, parklands, wetlands, things like that. All areas where there can be wildlife. Most devices already have it. You've only got to open it up. You can have a look from the comfort of your lounge room and you might find an area in there where you can get out and take some photos. I've actually found a koala sanctuary here using that as well as all trails. So they're really handy for finding potential areas where there's wildlife. So don't discount Google Maps. Now, the final app that I use when I'm searching for wildlife and in photography in general is called Planet Pro. Now this is a paid one. There may be a free version of this. I'm not sure. Someone may have to leave a comment down below. Planet Pro is just a photographer's friend in terms of you can zoom right in on the mapping it's got satellite mapping but it also has sun positions where the sun is going to rise where the sun is going to set and things like that so that's going to give you an idea of the lighting that may be occurring at any given time any given day any given year in the area where you might be planning to do your wildlife photography so you know if it's going to be dark or light in that area and it gives you half a chance of being there in the right conditions to be able to photograph that particular animal well there we are i've basically think i've covered a lot of the different techniques areas and things like that apps that i use to help me find wildlife and hopefully get you know a few decent wildlife photos now if you found this video helpful be super if you could just give me a thumbs up even better hit the subscribe button you won't miss any of my latest videos thanks very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye for now